Hi, today I want to talk to you about pulleys. Uh, pulley systems come in a variety of forms and their main purpose is to either change the direction of a force. So an example of that is here. I want to pull this mass up. So I'm pulling down on this side, which pulls the string up on the other side. It takes the place of me having to pull up on the on the mass, I'm able to change the direction of the force. That's one of the purposes. But the other purpose is to help us create a, a simple machine that can amplify force. And so what I have here is a pulley system. This is this pulley system has a series of strings. And as I pull on this side, I'm able to lift up this mass. And what we find is when we do measurements on this, that the number of strings that are getting pulled upward, one, two, three, four, five, represents the mechanical advantage of the system. That means that if I have on this side 200 grams, I'm able to lift this side with 40 grams. That assumes that the mass of the pulleys that are moving are massless. Since the 200 grams is down here and the, these pulleys do have a little bit of mass, the amount that I have to pull with is a little bit more than the weight uh, on this side divided by five, because I also must account for the, the weight of the pulleys. But ultimately, this creates a mechanical advantage. I amplify the force. So, 40 grams times 9.8 of force on this side is equal to a force output on this side of five times the amount. Now, where this becomes interesting is when we look at pulley systems in other forms. So what I see here is I see a pulley system in the middle in which I have two pulleys side by side at the top instead of over top of each other. Pulleys come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Here I have four pulleys stuck into this block. Here I have three pulleys and you can see they are similar and but they ultimately lead to a different arrangement of strings. And so in this pulley system, I have a single pulley on the bottom uh, a single pulley on the top, a fixed pulley, and a single pulley on the bottom, which is movable. And then I have another fixed pulley. So if I were to look at this system, uh, there will be, when I pull on this side, three strings moving up, one, two, three. So the purpose of this string here, this pulley here, is to change the direction of the string so I'm not just lifting up. This concept is called roving to advantage because I'm able to gain an additional force by lifting up compared to when I, when I pull in a downward manner. If I were to flip this system over, which I can do very easily here, I can take this off and do a flip. What I find is that in this case here, uh, what is going to happen? This is going to give us a mechanical advantage of two. There are going to be two upward moving strings, two upward moving strings, one, two, and one downward moving string, which means that if the force on this side was 10 newtons, that I'm getting 20 newtons of force out of the other side. I'm getting twice the force in out of this side that I put in. On the other hand, when I flipped it back over, the force here is going to be caused by an upward lift. And that upward lifting force is going to mean that there are going to be three strings moving upward, one, two, three. And that gives us a mechanical advantage of three. Same pulley system, one I'm pulling down, that's called roving to disadvantage, one I'm lifting up, that's called roving to advantage. There is a trade-off as well in these systems. Sometimes we want to uh, amplify not the, not the uh, force, but the distance. And so if I have a system in which 
I want to lift a, a mass very quickly, I could change the input and output sides. And so by pulling on this side, I'm able to increase the overall distance. I'm going to put the pulley system back to its original combination to demonstrate this. OK, so now that I've rearranged the pulleys, I can demonstrate this. So I'm going to pull down on this side. I'm going to pull down about half the distance. And watch how far this mass is going to rise up. So high, it just flies right off the top. I can't even reach the bottom. Now, this is. And this, this process here is a mechanical advantage of, of one third, which means that the, if I assume the input is on this side, I am amplifying the distance on this side by three, where if I switch those ideas and I say, okay, you know what, this side is the input over here, I get three times the force out on this side. So I can either get three times the force or three times the distance. I don't get both. In fact, to lift this mass over here, I have to pull and pull and pull and pull and pull the string. And I, if I have a mechanical advantage of three over here, that means I have to pull the string three times the distance that I want to lift it. So some things to consider when dealing with pulleys. Now, this idea of mechanical advantage can be seen in these other pulley designs as well. Uh, I have over here a mechanical advantage of three. You can see this is another a combination of three. Similar to this, there are three upward strings and one downward string. But in, in this case, the pulleys are laid out a little differently. They're in this block together. And so when I pull on them, I get that same type of motion. The last type here is that roving to advantage where we again, can see I have three upward strings, except this time I'm pulling my force upward. So again, count the number of upward strings that gives you the mechanical advantage and recognize that when dealing with pulleys, you have an option of amplifying force or amplifying distance. You don't get both and they will uh, give you the force or the distance equivalent to the mechanical advantage. So a mechanical advantage of three will give you a force output of three times the force, a mechanical advantage of one third gives you a distance output of three times. If you have any questions as always, let me know. Have a wonderful day.